Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So in this video, I wanna talk about what you can build as a blockchain developer and kind of talk about some, some other things you might not have thought of, like things that I don't talk about very much on this channel. So stay tuned and we'll go over all those things. Uh, but before I do that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below that really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to become blockchain developers because that's what we need in order for you know the blockchain to continue to adapt and evolve and you know become what it needs to be. So let's go ahead and start thinking about um, what you need in order to become a blockchain developer or maybe what types of things that you can build. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about what you can do as a blockchain developer. So the first and foremost thing that I talk about a lot on this channel are dApps or decentralized applications. You know, these are applications that are powered by the blockchain, um, probably write data to the blockchain, use that data, probably have smart contracts where you can, you know, write code that gets executed on the blockchain, right? That's what I talk about most on this channel. And I'll kind of show you examples of that first but then I'll save some of the other things that I don't talk about as much, um, the, the other kinds of things that you can build as a blockchain developer. So let's start with dApps, right? Um, so you could go to a website like dapradar.com to check out dApps, check out a bunch of real live dApps uh, that are on you know, Ethereum, I think they do EOS now. Um, and yeah, you can look at these. You can see you know, dApps that are you know, backed by the blockchain that are powered by smart contracts. You know, one example is CryptoKitties. And this is a crypto collectible game. Um, and you can also see other things like, uh, you know, IDEX here, which is a decentralized exchange. So this is a way for people to actually trade tokens, um, Ethereum-based tokens, without having to trust one another. And that's one of the reasons that I really talk a lot about decentralized applications because that's what I think is a big more like long-term deal like this is a much bigger long-term uh, use case for the blockchain which is the trustless aspect and being able to build applications that are trustless and secure where you don't have to think about whether the other person is trustworthy or not there's like a you know a a ledger that stands in between you and them that you're both connected to um, where you don't have to trust whether this person is going to fulfill their end of the bargain or not. And here's a prime example, like an exchange. So if you have a decentralized exchange, what happens is there's a smart contract and you know the trader, so both traders are on each side of this equation. You know, you have a, a purchaser and a seller and those two people don't have to trust one another or the exchange itself. You, you know, you're able to verify that the smart contract is fair and you're also able to uh, basically not have to worry about whether this person's gonna sell to you or not. All that you have to agree upon is a price and it'll work. So that's a huge like value add to uh, an exchange like this. You don't have to worry about whether your funds are gonna get stolen your funds stay in your wallet until the trade happens, which is a big deal. So like that's an example of like why I think, you know, decentralized applications are a big deal. So let's talk about maybe some other kinds of things that you could build as a blockchain developer and, you know, what kind of skills you would need to know in order to do that. So, um, since we're talking about exchanges, let's talk about a, a different type of exchange, like a, a centralized exchange. So this would be uh, Coinbase. You know, there's lots of exchanges out there, but I'll use Coinbase for example because this is the you know the biggest uh, you know exchange in America where I live. So you know, Coinbase is a centralized exchange, and you have to know like if you were going to build a centralized exchange like this, you would need to know a lot of blockchain development skills in order to make this happen. Mostly about how to manage public and private keys and also how to send cryptocurrency from one account to another. 
Those are the kind of basic ones. There might be more, but those are the two that step, stick out to me. So, and this is like another part of blockchain development that I haven't talked about as much. If you're interested, just leave me a comment down below. But that's like actually understanding, you know, how public and private keys work. So if you were going to build something like a, a decentralized exchange, you'd have to manage, you know, a user's private keys. And with something like Coinbase, you know, they rotate, um, you know, accounts like you, you, like you're, you're like if if you were gonna buy and sell Ether, for example, and I was gonna send it on and off Coinbase, you know, they rotate those accounts. You're not always locked into this being your address, and I think that's part of the security uh, ad is that they don't, um, you know, your private key isn't your private key that is attached to your account forever. You know, it rotates. It's generated whenever probably you want to make a transaction. I'm not 100% sure how they do it, uh, but I've got a good idea of what is required in order to do that. So you would need to basically manage a, a user's private keys on a, on a server. And that's like a skill you'd have to learn is how to, you know, generate a wallet. Um, you know, they call them HD wallets, stands for hierarchical deterministic wallet. But I don't want to get too far in the details there, but that's like an example. So another example would be how you do that for like just a cryptocurrency wallet. Like what if you wanted to build one, something like, you know, MetaMask, which is I've got here in my browser. Um, you know, this is a, a MetaMask, this is a crypto wallet, but also a way for you to sign your transactions for dApps, right? But there's also like Jax, which is another popular crypto wallet, which basically does the same kind of thing that Coinbase does, but it does it in a more um, static way. Like you're always gonna have the same accounts because you're building in that HD wallet, which I talked about before, which is basically you're generating a wallet that has a public and a private key pair. And with your wallet client, you're actually managing um, the private key with the wallet itself. And you have to figure out how to do that in a secure way where people will trust your app um, and you know, it makes it worth it for them to use it and things like that. So if you're going to do this and you're going to build like a cryptocurrency wallet to support that market and support, you know, sort of a wider uh, customer base, like before, you know, we started having more people use dApps, um, you would basically have to support all kinds of blockchains. And so you're going to become a real generalist blockchain developer uh, that's going to have to know how to support, you know, public and private keys for each blockchain crypto that you support. You know, thankfully, like a lot, there's a lot of tokens out there that have just built on top of Ethereum, so that's not hard to to do if you know how to, you know, manage Ethereum-based transactions. But if if you want to support Bitcoin or all these other blockchains that you know have their own unique way of doing things, you also have to know how to do that and integrate that into your wallet itself. Um, so that's like another type of use case for blockchain right now. Um, let's see here. So I would think the last thing, and this would probably be the hardest thing. You know, I talk about this in some of my other videos, which is some people say, you know, what kind of blockchain developer do you want to become? And I assume that most people want to become, you know, want, want to build the kinds of things that I've mentioned so far. Either they want to build dApps, so they need to become you know, a programmer that builds applications or they need to like learn how blockchains work and send cryptocurrency with a bunch of different blockchains um, so they can create like a crypto app of some kind. But the last thing is like to build your own blockchain. And that's a different um, problem all in itself. And it's harder. And the reason it's harder is because it's harder to build something that's unique. Um... And the most people just don't understand like the low level uh, aspects of how blockchain works. It's very complicated. Um, you basically become a core developer in that sense. You know, for an application, it's a lot easier to build an application that's unique because you can basically take the same app concept and just like fork it, but you know, kind of twist it for your own use case. You see that all the time with like crypto collectibles. Basically, people have just forked the crypto kitties code and change it a little bit and put their own you know, unique skin on it in order to make their own crypto collectibles. You see that all the time. And I guess you do see that with like forking blockchains, but it's a lot harder to 
build something that's unique and has purpose. And I guess it does happen all the time because a lot of the early ICOs did that. Um, so I don't want to, I don't want to belabor that too much, but I'm assuming that's not what most people want to do. Um, but I would, did want to expose that to you as something you could do because you could build your own blockchain. All right, guys, that's all I got for today. If there's any other questions that you, uh, I didn't answer. Feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section below. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and hit the thumbs up button down in the video below. Like I said, that really helps these videos get found. Um, so I'm going to leave sign off for today. And until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.